good morning or whatever time of day it is for you while you're watching this. This is the third installment of TS Elements for SolidWorks. And I've had a number of people ask me about what about the OBJ import to TS Elements for SolidWorks? Can we bring in OBJ files and have them be solid in SolidWorks? And also knowing that one of our other partners, Luxology, has a product that can build sub D models and export an OBJ. So is that a possibility? The answer is yes. You can build sub D models in Modo and then export them via OBJ and then into SolidWorks using the TS elements add-in and have them converted back into sub D models, just as you had built them in Modo in sub D. So by way of introduction, my name is Mark Biasotti. I'm a product specialist with SolidWorks. And I'm going to spend a few moments here just talking about that workflow and then talking about some of the advantages and disadvantages between uh, Modo versus Rhino with the T-spline add-in. So let's get over to Modo and uh, have a look at that. Let's just, uh, to start with, let's just uh, let's bring in something from their library that's swoopy to illustrate the workflow going from Moto to SolidWorks. So let's drop in this, this boss and um, let's go ahead and get it down on the floor. Move it into the origin. And you know what? I don't really need the, uh, don't really need the uh, rows itself. I'm more interested in the boss. So here you can see we have a sub D model of this, this boss. And if I toggle between poly and sub D mode, you can see how it was created with box modeling. Um, let's just take this over to SolidWorks and see what we get. Um, one thing you need to keep in mind though, is when you do take OBJ models from online, online websites or from Moto or whatever. Just make sure that they're the correct real world scale. Um, a lot of times they aren't. And that's important when you come into SolidWorks because if they're too big, they're just not gonna import. And this guy is about eight inches high. So um, that's probably real world, I would say. So let's go ahead and save this as a OBJ. I already have a saved it once here. Let's overwrite that. It's just saying it can't take uh, the material with it. Um, okay, and then over in SolidWorks, we're going to open up that OBJ file with our TS elements add in. So this guy here. One thing I want to bring to your attention is when you bring it in, you notice I had inch meter, inch uh, units over in Moto. Tried this and I hope this gets resolved, but uh, if you bring it in an inch, it's going to come in too large. For some reason, leaving it in meters will work. So let's do that. So opening up in SolidWorks, and you see you have your T spline and you have one solid body. Um, let's throw a bone china material on that. And you can see we have a pretty nice looking model, very intricate. You can imagine how hard that would be to do in SolidWorks. And if you doubt that it is a solid model, let me just quickly punch a hole through it. Nope. Let me do through all. It's two directions. And there you go. A real solid model. So that's, that's the vase. So um, let's go back to Moto and I'll talk about a little just a moment about that limitation I spoke of um, earlier. So just take this away and uh, let me quickly just build a, um, 
a shape. And um, we'll do something analogous to a remote control. So I'm just going to build out this simple box. And let's just get it centered correctly on my grid. Just kind of get it kind of approximate width and height of what I want and thickness. And I think that's probably good. So we have it a simple rectilinear box. And if you in Moto toggle the tab key, you get L sub D. And like in T splunge, you can toggle back and forth. So Let's uh, let's just go into our right view and do a little bit of manipulation, and uh, start stretching it and pulling it and doing all those those nice things that we want to do to it. Um, so, say for instance, we want to take uh, these verts down here, oops, and pull them down a bit. Let me turn off my snapping, and then. Maybe take these. Let me take my lasso and go back to lasso and pull this up a bit. And then from the top view, let's give the whole thing a nice wedge. Now, there's some very cool tools in Moto as far as manipulating things. I think they really had to do this right because I talk about microsurgery and SOLIDWORKS surfacing. Well, these guys are the microsurgery of uh, brain surgery because they have to deal at a vertice edge and polygon level and so they've got to have some really powerful manipulation tools. One that I like is fall off. Um, so if we fall this off, and I'll show you, you'll get this in a minute, got this fall off tool, a linear fall off, and oops, Now what I can do is, uh, in Moto, if nothing's selected, everything's selected. But the falloff tool is going to allow me to taper this at uh, more towards the front than at the back. So if I turn on my scale tool and I actually just scale in on the X, I can do this. And uh, if I put it back in shape mode you'll see that. So um, we can also just grab uh, just these verts up front, maybe these two, and keep scaling just those. So I want, uh, let's turn off our, our fall off, grab these, scale these in just a bit. Okay, so I could keep playing with this all day, but I'm not going to. For the sake of time, I'm just going to get to that point that I, I mentioned. So here we have our basic shape for the remote control. I think I would like to really have this have some definition, so I want a very sharp top. So like in T-splines, you can actually put creases in here too called edge weighting. And so if I go ahead and grab these edges, wrong loop. Let's start it this way. Give it a little help. Okay. And then go to vertex mapping, um, edge weight. We can actually just convert that edge into a sharp and now we can continue to play around with it. Like you know, it's kind of too thick now, so um, I would I would take this and uh, 
grab grab the top polys pull them down and maybe angle it a bit like yay okay um, but just keep in mind that in um, if we're going to transfer this over to SolidWorks, you would not be able to keep that edge weighting in there because that's not a definition that OBJ understands. So let's undo that, go back to where we were, and there's something else you can do. And that is, oops, don't want to do that. <laughs> um, you can actually just start to uh, put in... Uh, more edges into the model to get it sharper. And you can do that uh, with what's called uh, loop slicing. Um, and OBJ will understand that. And if we go over and do a loop slice in here and adjust it up to the top, we're able to get a much sharper solution at the top of the model, like so. And if we go back into our right view and just you know, grab all of that and maybe scale the whole thing this time this by our y-axis, do something like that. So, you know, we've got the basis for a good start on the remote control. Now, the other thing, too, is that we can actually put more uh, sub-D objects in here and uh, OBJ should be able to bring them over if we start a new mesh item. Uh, add mesh and go back and create a button, for instance. Let's give it some thickness. Let's bring it up. Let's put it up in front here. And now we have a new mesh object that we can sub D also. Uh, if we um, go back to OpenGL and do our tab key, now we have a button there along with our um, other mesh. So let's just uh, maybe bring that down a bit. Let's take all of it over to uh, SolidWorks. So let's go ahead and say save, save as OBJ. Call this remote from Roto. And again, I should have probably just checked my scale. Um, I really wasn't paying attention, but it looks like it's probably about five or six inches long and maybe pretty big for a remote maybe uh, nine inches is a long long remote um, but that's not a problem we can we can scale it down in fact I can just uh, do that really quickly here should I get my view roller tool up Let's see how big that is now. Yeah, that's more like it, like something under six inches, I think is what most remotes sizes are. So let's go ahead and save it now as an OBJ remote control from Moto. Okay, jump over to SolidWorks. Drop down to our OBJ T-spline type. And there you have it, the remote control. And what's nice about this is that it actually brings in the button as a separate body from the uh, remote control itself. So let's go ahead into the right plane and let's split it up. Let's just put a parting line between the top and bottom housing and do a cut, a thin cut. Make that like 030, 
through all in both directions. And we can hide the top and see the, the bottom. Let's go ahead and do a shell. That's always the acid test, right? So, unfortunately, I think I picked the wrong face there. Okay, so this is going to be the remove face. Give it like a 085 wall thickness. There you have it. And then, as you know, the beauty of this then is that now we can do more types of manipulation here in SolidWorks uh, with this as an add in. So, if we take this shape and we want to start to manipulate it, we can do that. Um, say, for instance, uh, we've got a bigger battery than, than we thought, and uh, we need to adjust this area. We can do that right in SolidWorks. Um, say I want, for instance, a somewhat of a bulge on the top. I can grab uh, these verts here and pull them up. Give it a little bit of a pillow shape. So you get the idea. Um, so that's how you can bring things over from Sol from Moto. And just keep in mind though, you can have very sharp, you can have really sharp creases. Now I can get this even sharper over in Moto and bring it over, but you'll never be able to get totally sharp because edge weighting doesn't come over through OBJ. Okay. So I hope that gives you an appreciation for how you can use TS Elements along with other products like Modo from Lexology to build complex objects like this vase, for instance, which would be pretty hard to do in SolidWorks using traditional surface modeling, but can be easily accomplished using subdivisional modeling and products like Modo and uh, T-Splines for Rhino. If you have any other questions, you can visit the websites that I have listed here on the screen. Uh, the first one is for the SolidWorks TS Elements page on T-Splines website. They also have a number of sample models if you'd like to download them and try them out uh, with the trial version of TS Elements. Also, if you're interested in uh, Modo from Lexology, I have their website listed here, and uh, they've got a lot of great uh, tutorials, videos, and can find out much more about their product. And also Rhino uh, as the product that T-Splines works with and can export models into SolidWorks using TS Elements. Have a good day.